I've had the weirdest things on the way. I just like I can fly from uh, LAX to Atlanta to see some lawyers and a dentist, the combination platter of wonderful days. And, and my plane was broken. And when my plane's broken, my friends do not give a shit. They're like, oh, poor baby. Is your plane broken? You have to take a commercial flight like every fucking buddy else. But it's not like it used to be, or either that or I'm losing touch, you know, because I'm standing in line, I got a first class ticket, and I get up to the front of the line, and there isn't anybody there. It's just a kiosk uh, with a computer terminal, and I'm not good at computers, and I don't want to touch this thing because it's got grease and dirt, and what I can only pray to Jesus is meringue. But it works pretty good, you know. I, I swipe my card through there, and up pops a diagram of the aircraft, and it shows all the seats on the plane. And it shows which ones are occupied, so you can choose your own seat. And that is almost a great idea. <laughs> what would make that a great idea is if there was a photograph of the person sitting in that chair. And about a five-minute bio clip telling you a little bit about them and what their breath smells like. Right, because I picked my seat and I'm in first class, so as soon as I walk into the cabin, I can see my chair and sitting right next to me is a big, fat fuck. Now, now I know I'm heavy, but I'm not a big, fat fuck. This guy was a big, fat fuck. And part of him is in my chair. And I don't know if it's part of them I can sit on. <laughs> hey, I've got a little tip for the morbidly obese, and I don't mean to sound cruel, but once you get to 550 pounds, <laughs> stay home and go for the record. <laughs> I'll sponsor you. Write tatersalad.com on your gut, and I'll send peaches over there. Peaches? Why wouldn't I send pizzas? I'll send peaches and a salad. But where would be the comedy, Mr. White? Oh, so you're all hung up about that, huh? Okay, I'm just going to try to do that line right, just in case we decide to do it that way. I'll send pizzas over there. Oh, that is funny. He said pizzas. <laughs> oh, Mr. White, boy, he's rich tonight. I get to Atlanta, and I check into the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, and, and uh, I, the next morning I go to take a shower, and there's no hot water. And I call the front desk, and I tell the girl at the front desk, I said, there's no hot water. And the girl at the front desk said, sometimes there's no hot water. <laughs> Didn't I just tell you that? I said, I've stayed in... $20 a night motels or water was so hot you could cook your nuts with it. <laughs> well, every once in a while, everybody will wake up at the same time, and they all take a shower at the same time, and we just run smack out of hot water. <laughs> you guys didn't think about that. They thought about it at the Motel 6. But that whole concept of people wake up in the morning with shit to do got right by the Ritz-Carlton Hotel. So I take a nice cold shower. And then I got to go meet with these lawyers. Now, now, I hate lawyers. I just can't stand them. And I hate them worse than you do, no matter how much. Have you ever seen them? A uh, video of that guy shooting his lawyer and his lawyer's trying to hide behind that little tree and he just keeps shooting. That's the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen in my goddamn life. I've got that on my video iPod and if I just need to chuckle sometime during the day, I just hit the play button. Play. Pow, 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 pow. Ha, 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 ha
play, pow, 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 ha, 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 ha. play, pow. I do that till I come. <laughs> then I got to go to the dentist. You see how my day's shaping up. Cold shower, lawyers, dentist, the trifecta of fucked up day. And uh, I couldn't eat because of what I had to do there. So now it's 2.30 in the afternoon. I, before I finish this story, will admit that I'm in a foul mood. Uh, my, my mouth is starting to hurt, and, and I haven't eaten all day. And I'm going to go eat lunch at this place called The Clubhouse. It's Atlantic Square Mall in Buckhead. And I used to eat there all the time. I live in both cities. And I, and I pull up. Now, all this out here used to be just regular parking. But now the whole thing is valet parking. So you can't just park your car and go get some food. You have to wait for this little prick in a little red truck to wake up. But he isn't going to wake up because he's got on headphones and mirrored sunglasses. And he's looking the other direction, watching these two girls walk down Peachtree Boulevard. And I can tell by the whole scenario that they're not going to be out of his line of sight for 20 minutes. There's nothing going to get in the way. So I'm like, fuck, do your job. And I decide, well, I'll just park the car myself. And the only space I saw was right next to his truck. And I'm going to park the car myself. And then once he sees I'm going to park the car myself, he jumps out of his truck and he gets militant. And he jumps in front of my Range Rover and he puts a hand on his hands on the hood. And he goes, nobody parks their own car in this parking lot. I park the cars in this parking lot. <laughs> well, I rolled down my window and very politely said, get out of my fucking way. He goes, nobody talk to me like that. You can't park your car in this parking lot. And I said, fuck you. He goes, I'm calling the police. What's your first and last name? I said, it's fuck you. It's F-U-C-K capital Y-O-U. Fuck you. That's my name. He gets on his radio and calls the Dalai Lama of all parking lot attendants who comes squealing up in his little red truck. Apparently they give them to him. He hops out of the truck like he's going to do something. He immediately recognizes me and you see this big, oh shit, wash over his face. He literally shoves this kid out of the way and starts apologizing. He said, Mr. White, I am sorry. I said, listen, this kid's not doing his job. He's an insolent little piece of shit. He needs to have his ass ring. He goes, Mr. White, he's going to have his ass ring by me and my boss and my boss's boss. And I was like, well, I had no idea the chain of command went that deep in the parking lot. <laughs> He said, Mr. Wyatt, let us uh, take your Range Rover. We'll wash it for you. We'll fill it up with gas. We'll park it. No charge. I said, don't park it here. I don't want this little prick to key it. <laughs> he said, we'll park it on the other side. And I said, fine. So I go have a nice lunch and take more pain pills. <laughs> Get in a little better mood. Just had my gum scraped, you know. So I walk outside and my Range Rover is shining like a new penny and I hop in and I fire it up and it's full of gas and I could have left. <laughs> but instead I drove back over there where that kid was. <laughs> I rolled down my window and he rolled down his window and I went, how'd that work out for you, pretty good? And here's the moral of that story. Don't fuck with me when I hadn't been drinking. <laughs> Pulitzer Prize winning author Norman Mailer died last year at the age of 84 years old. For the last 60 years of this man's life, he drank to excess every day. Uh, he was married six times. He smoked pot. He stabbed his second wife. And I've never read one of his books, but I gotta tell you, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> We've had a blast since we've been here, man. I tell you, we went out last night. I got so drunk. I woke up this morning and somebody had shit my pants. (laughs) 
I don't know who it was. But I know he eats corn. And cake. Corn cakes, I think is what he was doing. 